guys this is my third time filming this if this if this doesn't work we just not the video just not happening hi friends welcome or welcome back to the channel if you saw by that title you saw by this thumbnail we are doing a so you want to start reading here's some recommendations that's what i'm calling this i don't know what i'm gonna title it but that's think when you think of this video think of that saying so i have chosen 15 books 15 books different genres um to give you guys recommendations on ugh, i don't say videos give you guys recommendations on books for like new readers even if you're not a new reader and you just kind of want to start these books feel free to but i specifically did choose them for people who want to start reading and don't know where to start or you know don't know what what they even want to see why is who the heck y'all i'm about to like start putting my phone on do not disturb because i feel like every time i get ready to start a new video somebody want to call me like i will call you back ma'am um okay but yes so like i said i chose 15 books so i have i did five different like topics i guess you can say so i did just the general romance um so it's like a mix uh, of like fake dating and things like that not trope specific but just like your your all around good romances <laughs> and then i chose some spicy romances for my girls who want to start reading a little spicy um with some, some little spice i chose three books there i also have some dark romances for you guys so like mafia arranged marriage things like that and then outside of the romance genre i have thriller and fantasy so without further ado we're going to start talking about these books and i hope you guys take some you know take some of these recommendations and start reading them too because like i said i think they're wonderful reads i love them these are like reads that like made me fall in love with reading even more so yeah let's get into the video okay guys so starting with romance let me just sit these down and we're gonna i'm just gonna sit them on my lap actually so <laughs> so starting out with just your general romance like good ones to just kind of start with um first i'm gonna go colleen hoover november 9th um i had to throw in a colleen hoover there because her writing is the one that made me actually start reading which i think that's the case for so many people um i actually read verity that was my very first book that i had read by her and the rest is history like now we're here so thank you colleen for making this all possible <laughs> but um i chose november 9th um it's a super beautiful story and it's very different it's not even i wouldn't know it's not like a groundhog kind of day thing day kind of thing but it's basically ben and fallon um they meet on november 9th um because fallon is in a conversation with her dad and so ben kind of comes to save her help her out um and so after that they spend the entire day together and they decide to meet every november 9th um for years to come like after that i think they did it for six years um and they had no convert no communication with each other like in between the years so no phone numbers no social media anything like that and they just always made um i guess an agreement to meet at a certain time at the same restaurant where they met the first time um and go from there so like i said it happens over a span of six years you see what happens with all six november 9th and i really enjoyed it it did i cry yes i did cry i did cry during this one but i also smiled and i also laughed um so I highly recommend it it was a really good book and like I said it's not long it was only I think it's like 300 pages y'all my leg is shaking I don't know if I need to eat something um but yeah I highly recommend this one and will I be rereading this on November 9th yes I may make it like an annual thing to read this book every November 9th because it's just so cute and I actually read it I think I did read it in November but I didn't read it in November 9th I read it like November 11th or 12th so next well this year i will be reading it on november 9th so 
that is the first one archer's voice by mia sheridan and if you guys have not already heard of this book i highly recommend you pick this book up i actually have two copies of this book because i literally loan it out to everyone but i love to have my own copy because sometimes if it's loaned out i'm like man i really want to like reread re a chapter or something so like I said, I love this one. It is small. I, it's not really small town, but it is small town because um, Brie, they, basically, she ends up escaping to this small town to just kind of get away from her normal life for a while to take a break. Um, she had a traumatic experience and she just really needs to refresh or restart. And so she ends up escaping. I think it's called, yeah, Pelion, Maine is where she ends up going. And she meets this guy named Archer. And Archer actually um can't physically talk so he does use sign language and he a lot of his people in the community they really aren't nice to him they really look down on him and Bree is the first person to really just kind of even become a friend to him and it's so beautiful and I just love the growth I love the development I love Archer um and yeah and it is a like it's a love story so it's super super like safe and like it's not like traumatic or anything. like it's not a hard read it's very lighthearted. but also yes i did sob with this one too um <laughs> but like i highly recommend it it's such a beautiful story like i said i loaned one of my copies i don't even have my other copy right now because it's loaned out but i literally recommend this book to everyone who wants to start reading it is just one of those books that just like hits all the points you need and yeah it's just i love mia sheridan's writing too like after i read this i bought her whole backlist and i am so ready to continue reading more of her books because it's just her writing and her stories are just they just encapture everything that you could feel so yes five stars for sure and i hope you guys can check that one out and then lastly in like the general romance era i chose the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this one is fake dating and it actually is in the stem setting um which i think her writing is the only writing that i have read that's in like a stem setting um but it's really good i always find myself laughing and just like giggling my heart out when i read her books like her writing style is very much to entertain the person who is reading it but like not make them feel down or mopey if that makes any sense um but uh this one focused on olive and adam and adam carson is a professor at the school and olive is a student working on her phd and she has a best friend that wants to date one of her exes i think they officially dated it was like her ex or somebody she talked to seriously um and her best friend this kind of wants to date him but she doesn't want to if she, like if olive hasn't really moved on um so olive really doesn't like this guy anymore and so what she does to assure her best friend she ends up fake dating adam so her best friend thinks that um she's like you know that she doesn't she doesn't care about this guy anymore because she really doesn't um and so they don't like her and adam she doesn't take his class she really doesn't know much about him um and so yeah at, also adam carlson is known as he doesn't have the best reputation around the school like He's just known as like the professor that is just so mean to everyone and so hard. Um, he always, you know, declines people's dissertations and things. So a lot of students are not really fond of him because of how hard of a, prof a professor he is. So when Olive starts to fake date him, it really makes heads turn. And yeah, it's just like so like, it's just everything you need. And like I said, it's so... I love it because it's such like in a different setting it's not your normal like small town it's not your sports or anything it's a stem setting and the way she writes her stories like i said i love them i fly through them playlists are always so great with her books so yes i think she only really has well she has four books out right now and then she has bride coming out later this year i cannot wait to read um the new one that came out which is love theoretically i think so that one is on my tbr but like i said this is very ugh, this is a very good one <laughs> to start out with if you want to start reading romance and so now moving on to like our spicy romance which those like those books they all have a little spice but it's very closed door spice honestly it's not 
like you wouldn't go into it thinking like okay this is about to be a spicy book but these books i'm about to tell you now these are if you do not like spice do not read these but if you do want to step into the smut area i guess you can call it these are ones that i do recommend and so the first one i had to choose a hockey romance because you know we love our golden retriever guys we just the hockey guys always get me um but it's icebreaker by hannah grace and so this one actually the girl is also um an athlete she's an ice skater and nate is a hockey player and they go to the same college and the they have separate rinks but the hockey rink ends up getting damaged and so they have to share the rink with the ice skaters and anastasia she's known um she's not, well not known but she um does not want them there <laughs> she does not want them there she is working on like her a very big routine for an event she has coming up um and she's also the type she doesn't really do relationships she has a fling with one of her best friends at the moment um and so nate comes in the picture and you know she's not fun of him. she's not fun but he kind of just works her way into her heart and it's just so beautiful and he really like takes her life serious like she has a like her ice skating partner is not the best person and nate really kind of calls him out on it like it really starts to all become clear who the problem or what the problem actually is and so like i said very golden retriever very protective instincts very you know kind-hearted and just so sweet also he got a mouth on him so beware <laughs> like i said it is definitely definitely spicy so um i highly recommend this one like i, said, I love a good hockey romance i feel like if you have not read a hockey romance you are definitely you definitely have to start because then you're never going to want to read another like sports which I, love, I like other sports too but hockey something about those hockey romances y'all all right and so next we have my killer vacation by tessa bailey and if you guys didn't watch my previous video i actually just did a tessa bailey reading vlog i read the bellinger sisters like little duology um but yes this was actually the very first book i read by tessa bailey i chose this one because it wasn't a thick book and i was just like i just needed a lighthearted read um and i hadn't really seen too much about this one so i was like okay well it, I won't I won't go in like already knowing what's gonna happen or knowing like what the plot is so I went in blind and this one is cute it's really it's a spicy murder mystery and um what happens is this girl and her brother which I forgot her name um but she ends up taking a vacation with her brother over the summer she's a teacher and so she's like saved up to like really take this very nice vacation um but the house they end up staying in they end up finding a dead body and the owner of what well, this yes the owner of the house that they actually who actually is found dead i think if i remember correctly um so basically the sister ends up hiring a bounty hunter to come and investigate to see what happened why her brother is dead um and so the bounty hunter is obviously you know going to question her and her brother because they were the ones that found the body um and he's really like this grumpy guy she's all sunshine and just trying to enjoy her vacation um but she also listens to i think it was true crime pro podcast that she listened to so she's also like trying to run her own investigation at the same time and it's really it is really annoying him but their story is so cute like i said you see he's just this little grumpy guy he's a bounty hunter he doesn't want to be bothered he just wants to finish it and get out on the road get back to his life um and so yeah it's super cute super just all the feels and like it's a super it's a short read but it's also spicy so and tessa bailey if you have not read anything by her like i said this is for like people who want to start reading but if you have not read tessa bailey i highly recommend reading her books they're all so lighthearted. they're all just so easy to get through and a really enjoyable read so highly recommend that one and then lastly this is one of my favorite books of the year but we have the spanish love deception by elena armas and it's actually becoming a movie if i remember correctly i think this will become a movie and i cannot wait hopefully they do the story right um but here you have catalina and aaron and they are co-workers but they don't have the best relationship. Catalina thinks that Aaron hates her. Um, and Aaron really is just being Aaron. He's a very straightforward guy. He's not really an emotional guy. Um, 
you know he comes in does his work goes home you know all the things all the normal guy things um and Catalina her sister is getting married and she needs a date to the wedding to convince her family that she's like done with her ex-boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend is the groom's brother so like they don't want to make it awkward for her so she ends up trying to find a fake boyfriend for it and after all resolutions like all her resources are out she can't find anyone Aaron actually decides to offer to be her fake boyfriend and she is just flabbergasted at it she's like you hate me why would I why would you want to do this and she you know she's very on edge she thinks that he's going to stand her up she thinks that he's going to stand her up and things like that um and so you really just see like you know once they get to Barcelona where her family is um things change you know she really starts to see Aaron for who he is and all of his glories all of his glorious goodness and he is literally so like I just I love him but um <laughs> yeah like I said and it's also yeah grumpy I wouldn't even it's a workplace it is a workplace romance because you know they're they're working together but it's also a fake dating turned real dating so yes it's also a one bed trope there are a lot of things in this book and it just it's it's chef's kiss is what i can say that's what i can say about that one <laughs> all right next we're going to move into like our dark mafia ma dark mafia romance so one of the first one is the predator which i actually just recently read this one and this is a part of a series there are five books in the series but the first two books um which the reaper is the second one for this one but they're those two books focus this one and that one focus on the two main characters in this book um so this one does end on a cliffhanger and you will want to read the reaper but then after the reaper you can kind of stop and take a break from the series if you want um but this one is about tristan and morana morana i think that's how you say her name but um it is mob so you have their both of them are on two different sides of like the mob family so Think of like you have East and West, Morana is part of East, Tristan is part of West. I forgot what they even call them. Um, yeah, they think about it that way. And so Morana is actually the daughter of the mob king on that side. And then Tristan is more like the inherited son in a sense. Like he's not blood to the mob king over there, but the mob king raised him. Um, and Morana is after Tristan because she thinks that he has something of hers that she wants back. Um, and yeah, you see how that happens. And she doesn't have the best relationship with her father. So she ends up, you know, really kind of leaning on Tristan. And it's so not normal because they're supposed to be enemies. And um, you just see how well they actually go together when it's really forbidden for them to be together so i really like it like i said it does end on a cliffhanger so you will have to read the second book where it all comes together um but overall definitely recommend this one if you do want to get into dark romances it's not um it's not super dark but it is like the plot line is crazy like the twist is very crazy um so like i said i highly recommend that one Next we have Hooked by Emily McIntyre and this one is a never after novel and it is a retell no reimagining of um Peter Pan and this book it's not they're they're interconnected they're not even interconnected they're just standalones a part of the same world um the never never after world I guess you can say but basically they're all re dark reimaginings of Disney stories and so um that the other ones cover Lion King The Wizard of Oz I think one is Aladdin I think but yeah this one is probably one of my favorite ones I did love the Lion King one too but um this one they also focus on the enemy so this one is all about Captain Hook and um he is on a mission to basically getting his revenge on Peter Pan I guess you can say um so he ends up actually forming a connection with Wendy which Wendy is the daughter of Peter Pan in this book um and yeah that's all I really can say but it's super it's dark and it's you know it's spicy and it just sucks you in the writing I love Emily McIntyre's writing I cannot wait for the next book in this like world the never after world to come out um 
but yeah like I said, I highly recommend it I highly recommend this one so yeah like I said, it's basically he wants revenge but you know he really ends up you know falling for Wendy and that kind of messes up how he wants how he's gonna get his revenge um but then lastly for dark romance i have my dark romeo by parker s huntington and lj sheehan if you guys have watched any of my previous videos you already know parker s huntington has my heart she has written one of my favorite books of all time which is darling venom and when she like when i saw that this was written by her as well i immediately knew i had to read it i actually read it on my kindle but guys you can't tell me this cover is not gorgeous so i had to get the cover uh, well i had to get the paperback because of the cover <laughs> but this one um so you have dallas is the girl and then romeo is the guy um dallas was arranged to be married to someone else but romeo ruins that on purpose because he needs to be he needs to get married to inherit his father's company um and so his goal was to get dallas to marry him um but they don't like each other she obviously hates him because she was supposed to be married to someone else and he just came in and just you know ruined her entire plans um she wants kids he doesn't want kids like they there's attraction there but they obviously are trying to fight it um also there's text <laughs> like this is so small but i love text messages in books and this one they have group text messages between him and his two best friends and guys it is hilarious it is literally the highlights of like one of the highlights of the book like his friends are so funny and they will not leave him alone about like dallas <laughs> and like he's obvious like they can tell that he's like really like falling for her even though like he keeps denying it but you see like he becomes protective over her and like his instincts um obviously like you know she's his wife but yeah so um and she's also like on a mission like irk, like she she's wants to irk his last nerve because she doesn't want to be there she didn't want to be married to him um but yeah i i really love this one like i said and it is it's forced marriage um very spicy and very you know it's giving it's giving all you need it's giving i think the business is like about weapons or something like that i can't remember that particular part but like i said i highly do recommend that one but next we're gonna go to our thriller and fantasy so for thrillers the first one i have is a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson and this one is part of a trilogy but you do not have to read the other two i personally have not read the other two yet they are on my tbr but i did like that you could read this one and be one and done if you did not want to continue it and basically this one um you have what's her name pip yeah so pip um she is a student at school and she is working on her time capsule pro she's working on a project for school um her senior project yes her final project and she decides to investigate the murder of um one of the girls at their school and this was a highly classified murder um or is it the guy wait okay yeah no yeah wait okay y'all i just like okay i just had to like read i was like wait because two, two people died yes so she investigates the murder of two guys and well two people in this book so you have the girlfriend and a boyfriend which they were it's established that the boyfriend killed the girlfriend um but then the boyfriend killed himself after that um and so she like pip decides to investigate this her, on her own because she does not think that everything is adding up she thinks you know that he really did not do it and he does she doesn't think he really killed himself um so she ends up working with his brother um and a brother's name is what is the brother's name i forgot the brother's name but um yeah i forgot the brother's name that she ends up but she ends up pairing with his brother um to basically try to figure out what happened and to prove that sal is innocent even though obviously he's not alive anymore she just really doesn't like that his family is obviously being looked down on um and so she really she she does her homework um she ends up interviewing you know all of his friends ends up interviewing the girlfriends sisters and family um and so 
she also but she also has someone that is trying to destroy her research also um and so i really think that this was a good like it's also like it can be ya too because it's not yeah i think it is a ya like thriller i guess you can say um but i definitely think it's not too it, not there's not too much going on it's easy to follow the plot line the writing is super easy to follow um and it's intriguing you know you kind of try to figure out yourself like what the heck has happened um and so yeah i cannot wait to read the second one um and i think it's about like she starts she ends up starting a podcast i think is what the second one ends up being about but if you want to know if sal really did it or not this is and who actually killed andy because she's all she's also trying to prove you know if he killed himself but also if he actually killed the girlfriend so you find all of that out and if it's true or not so i keep saying so a lot but i highly recommend that one <laughs> um next we have wait i grabbed the wrong book guys i actually grabbed the maidens and i actually haven't even read this one next we have the silent patient <laughs> i made a mistake and grabbed the maidens at first which i haven't even read but um silent patient by alex I don't even know how you say his last name so i'm not even gonna try it but if you guys just look up the silent patient you will find it um and this is actually the one book i have read that is written by a man and i think that's the case for a lot of people and i really really truly truly loved it um so this one like it's a psychological thriller um the main character alicia that's her name um she is in a psych ward and she is in there because she killed a allegedly killed her husband um and after that she just decided to go silent she hasn't talked in over it's years i think it's like does it say how many years on here um it doesn't say how many years but she has not said a word not a peep in years um and so the guy his name is theo his so theo is a psychiatrist and he is attempting to basically help alicia and get her to basically be okay with everything that happened and really just try to get her story out there um to try to see like you know what actually happened um and yes i i love this book i ate it up and I can't say much more about it <laughs> because I don't want to ruin it for you guys. But there are twists, and you will. I, I mean, you can try to guess it. I didn't guess it. I was so, I was so far off. It didn't even make sense. Um, but yeah, you get to see how Theo helps Alicia um, tell her truth and figure out what happened to her husband. And then lastly, which I don't know if I said this already, but this was actually the first book that I read that got me into reading. And it is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Don't even ask me how I ended up picking a thriller for like my first book to read. I don't even know. I think I picked it up thinking it was somewhat romance. I I don't know, guys. It just happened. I went to Target one day, went to the book section. I was like, okay, I'm reading this book. Um, but if you guys have not read Verity, I highly recommend it. It is one of my favorite books still to this day. I think about this book so much and I have actually got a few of my friends to start reading based off of them reading this book. Like I gave this to one of my friends and now I always just give her books. I'm like read this one next, read this one next. And it all started from Verity. So I, Verity is definitely one of my favorite books. But um, so this one is based in New York and you have the main character, well, the main character her name is Lowen and what's the husband's name okay yes yeah. so you have Jeremy is the husband of Verity and Verity is a famous author um but she has been in a horrible accident where basically she has been paralyzed and she cannot finish her contract that she's made um uh, for her books and um Jeremy decides to hire someone to help finish her books for her and the girl's name is Lowen. Um, so Lowen actually ends up going to their home and ends up staying there. Well, her plan is to like stay there for a week to basically get all the research she needs, look through all of Verity's notes to try to finish up the last, I think it's the last two books or last three books she's supposed to write. Um, but once she gets there, she realizes things are not as good as they seem. Um, 
you know, Jeremy is very nice to her. Jeremy is, um, you know, very attentive and is helpful as much as she needs. Um, and they have a little son. They, Verity and Jeremy have a son, but they also have two twin girls. And yeah, <laughs> Loen has signed up for much more than she thought she signed up for. Um, during her time looking through notes, she finds Verity's manuscript um, of a book that no one knows about that is supposed to be like an autobiography and so we go back and forth between the current day of Loen, like just her life trying to figure out trying to go through notes to try to finish the book for Verity but also you go through chapters where she is reading the manuscript um and so if you guys ever look this up you'll see like team letter or team manuscript so that's the manuscript um but you will have to find out what the letter is I'm not gonna spill that for you guys um but yeah, so the manuscript is very interesting. Um, like I said, it's kind of like an autobiography. So she just gets to see kind of how Verity operated. Because, you know, she doesn't know Verity. She very can't talk to her. She's in the, she's paralyzed. Um, and so she is trying to find out whatever she can to kind of just re understand how Verity writes her books so she can write them the best she can. Um, so yeah, love that one. I will forever, forever love that book. Uh, okay, next we have our last three, which is fantasy. And I really try not to put this book in here because I think everyone already knows about this book. But for me, it was the very first fantasy book I read and I stand 10 toes down that this is one of the best books you can start reading if you wanna get into fantasy. But it is A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. And I, guys, this book, I haven't finished this series, which I think I always say that, and I'm trying, like I said, I am so, 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 so trying to hold out to avoid the book hangover um, until we know when the next book is coming out. But this world here, it's so, like, it's just so easy to understand. I think for a lot of fantasy books, it can be a lot of world building. It can be a lot of terminology that you're like, what the heck? am I reading and I think Sarah does a really good job at making this one easy I want to say if I remember correctly I think it was actually labeled YA fantasy but then they changed it to adult fantasy um because it can get spicy once you get more in the, uh, more into the other books um but this one is um about Feyre and she is a hunter and you, they have these worlds so you have the fey world and then you have the human world and there's just this one border separating them um and Feyre ends up killing one of them that was actually masked as a wolf or deer or something like that um and the people you know they they didn't like that even though she didn't know that he was a fey high fey or whatever she did not know um when she killed him and when the pers when they try to come back for her, she decides to go over to the Fey World and to keep them from harming her family, essentially, um, and to pay her dues for killing their <laughs> one of them. Um, and yeah, it from there it just goes. I don't want to say anything else because it just really takes a turn and. You know, you just get to see how these, these, this Fey world works. And the reason why I think it's so easy to kind of get into is because it's not super complex. You know, it, um, it's, it runs pretty much like the human world, you know, but they, they're not humans, you know, kind of, it, it's very much just a fake world, but it's easy to understand. That's like the only way I can really put it. A fake world, but easy to understand and not super complex. Doesn't take, you know, brain a lot of brain power to like truly just understand what's going on. But next I have The King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. And I chose this one. This one also gave me um, like really good like, um, how do I put it? I wouldn't even say like it didn't give me Akutar vibes, um, but it gave me the same feeling of like easy to understand, easy to get enraptured in it. Um, it's actually about um, vampires and it's a forced marriage um, or arranged marriage, marriage of convenience, kind of along those lines. Um, and you have Isolate, which I think that's how you, Isolate is how you say her name. Um, but she ends up having to marry Adrian, who is a vampire 
um, and like the arch enemy of her family. Um, and she ends up having to go back with him to his land, um, basically out of a debt to be paid. Um, and so they end up getting married and you just see all how it all works out for her and how she's getting adjusted to this and if she wants justice for her family and what she's gonna do. Um, so yeah, for her, you know, her wedding day is not her, her Nine Inch Army Armor Day. Her wedding day to her is like her death day um, because she has signed over her life now to Adrian. And it's so cute how it happens. And there also, there is a second book and it's called Queen of Myth and Monsters. And it's just, it actually picks up exactly where King of Battle and Blood left off. So I highly recommend it. Like I said, they're not super long books. It's just two books and I think they are very like easy to understand. And like I said, it's vampires and yeah. So, but last but not least, we have The Serpent and Wings of the Night by Carissa Broadbent. And guys, I love Carissa's writing. It is just, it, she does the same thing that I feel like Scarlett St. Clair did. There is not so like, it's not even world building. You're just immediately thrown into it, but it's not confusing. Like it's very well understood. There's not a whole bunch of brain power that takes like, okay, what's happened or how does this happen? It's just all so easy to just grasp and to just kind of flow with the story. Um, so this one, it is kind of like, I guess you can say the Hunger Games almost. Um, they have this thing called the Kajari and I think it's called the Kajari. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Kajari. And you have Araya and Raheen. And Araya is a human that was essentially adopted by the Vampire King um, when she was younger. And in order to get powers, in order to become um, his like predecessor when he passes, like to get to get the bond, they call it a quarterist bond. But basically for her to get his power since she is human, she has to win the Kajari so she can make that, so she can grant that or wish that, wish for that to be granted to her and her dad. Um, and so she's up against a whole bunch of vampires. And one of the vampires she ends up being up against is Raheen. And I think that's how you say his name. Um, but she is learning not to trust anyone and for him to come into the picture and try to get him to trust her or try to get her to trust him you know she's like what do you want you know but they end up actually you know forming a connection and becoming partners because you do have there are certain levels of the kajari where you do have to have a partner um and so he ends up becoming her partner and yeah it's the ending is tragic because it's like uh, it just hurts because you're like, why did this have to happen like this? Um, and then there is a second book that just released recently where it actually picks up where this one ends. And I really love that one. I have to say though, I think I love this one the most. It was just so much action. The second one was giving me more of A Court of Wings and Ruin from like giving me those kind of vibes because it was all war based, which I mean, yes, it's high stakes. It keeps you enraptured. But something about this one, I guess just the unknown trials that kept coming up and like seeing like, is she gonna make it through? Is he gonna make it through? What's gonna happen? Are they gonna be turned against each other? Seeing how all that worked, it just like, it just, you just on your toes the whole time. You're anticipating the next thing. And you know, you don't know who's gonna, cause everyone's like, everyone's out for themselves, honestly. But at the same time, you have a partner you have to trust. So, highly recommend this one as well. That is all the books that I think that are good if you want to start reading. I think those are all, you know, pretty good, easy books. They're not, you know, heavily based in series where like, you know, you can pretty much read it and then possibly stop, you know, if you want to. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys take some of these and you decide to read them. If you have read them, let me know what you guys think. And if you are planning to read them, let me know your most planned, your most anticipated one to read. Um, but yeah, I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye.